Hey everybody, this is Randy Santel, Atlas with Atlas and Zeus Promotion, the proud owner of FoodChallenges.com. Very, very excited tonight because I have not eaten a big meal or a food challenge in what seems like forever since mid-December when I got back from my 2015 Eastern United States and Canada tour, which you guys are watching all the videos from right now. Well, a lot of people have been asking, Randy, how do you train for and prepare for food challenges? So to thank you guys for supporting our channel, we want to show you guys how to win before you begin and prepare for your own food challenges and eating contests. Now the big thing with win before you begin, you've got to remember train, strategize, and if you do those two right, you'll be able to dominate your food challenge or eating contest. Now, this video is gonna focus on the 24 hours before the big food challenge or eating competition, and with anything, you've got to remember that you cannot just start training or getting ready just 24 hours beforehand. On foodchallenges.com, there's plenty of articles showing you guys how to train, and we recommend basically get your body acclimated for an entire week before you're about to eat your big eating competition or your food challenge, you need to treat your stomach muscles kind of like any other ordinary uh, skeletal muscle like your biceps, your chest, your legs, your back, all of those, you can't just go from benching 225 to 315 all in 24 hours. You've got to gradually acclimate your body, let them grow, and you guys know all that. But with your stomach capacity, you gotta treat it kind of the same way. So you need to acclimate yourself over the week, and this is what I used to do back in the day, and that's why all the articles on foodchallenges.com, they show you how to train with food, uh, or if you're interested, it's not always recommended because it can be dangerous, but it shows you how to use liquids uh, safely and properly if you do want to do that. But what we recommend, and this is what I always do, is to use foods topped off with liquids, and that's what we're about to do today. All right, so you followed all the articles on foodchallenges.com and you've gotten yourself ready now about 18 to 22 hours before your big meal, you want to basically max yourself out, max your stomach capacity, expand it as much as possible so that you're ready and you have enough time to basically get rid of everything that you consume during your max out meal before your big food challenge or eating contest. So what I've got here, and this is what I like to use, you can obviously have your own preferences, which those are described in articles on foodchallenges.com too, because it depends on uh, how many calories you can handle and then what your budget is like too. But what I've got sitting here is four pounds, four one pound bags that I got at the dollar store of mixed vegetables. Then there are six eggs, because I wanted to have some protein and then after I finish these four pounds, I've got eight pounds of watermelon. I didn't want to just do all vegetables because the flavor of that can get old. I wanted to also add some watermelon, a little bit more sugar and stuff than the vegetables. But after I finish these, this 12 pounds of food, I'm then going to see if I have any room left. I will drink some, uh, I've got water here along with a very manly, pomegranate berry sugar-free additive and I think it's gluten-free too but I'm basically going to practice like I want to eat during my actual eating competition so I've got this uh, these vegetables here are all warm and then I'm about to make them a little bit easier to eat and more delicious thanks to Frank's red hot sauce buffalo flavor I'm going to add quite a bit of this to make the vegetables taste obviously a lot better because they're just a bunch of vegetables along with some flavorless eggs. But we've got that there. We're going to start out, eat this as fast as I can, and then we'll probably try to eat the watermelon fast, but I'll be filling up, so I'll take a little bit more time. But let's get eating. Let's get going, and then just like I want to practice just like I'm going to be in the food challenge tomorrow, uh, about 20 hours from right now, uh, I'm going to time myself to see how long this takes to eat and then we will go from there. So let's get it started. Just like a challenge. One, two, three. Boom. All right.
All right, under four minutes, I got down all four pounds of vegetables plus the six eggs. And I went with the eggs because a big thing getting ready for food challenges or eating contests, you want to, you're able to typically eat more when you're in shape and your body's physically really hungry. Like this morning, I uh, rode my bike for about 30 miles. So, and then uh, obviously I'm hungry right now. Uh, finished four pounds of vegetables in under four minutes. But the big thing with wanting to eat fast is because a lot of people wonder, oh, what if I take two hours to eat my Big Macs out meal? Or uh, how long do I have? Really, you want to basically practice like it's going to be during the competition and you want to start out your contest or uh, eating your food challenge. You want to eat as much as you can, as quick as you can. And you need to make sure your stomach is ready for that because most people, if they try to eat a lot of food real quick and they're not used to that, they're likely to throw up or get sick or just have a stomach ache. You also need to let your body practice getting rid of all the air pockets so that you're able to continue eating at a fast pace. But these vegetables are gone, so now we'll get this bowl out of the way. We'll move on to the watermelon. All right, so now I've got the eight pounds of watermelon sitting in front of me, and now there's multiple articles on foodchallenges.com explaining all the various foods that you can use. I know if you look up what many other competitive eaters uh, eat for their training, you'll see them, some people eat cabbage, uh, really big salads, some people eat grapes, uh, strawberries, all kinds of things. I like using watermelons. Some people use melons and cantaloupes, but I, and you can leave the rinds on too, but I wanted to, as I said earlier, uh, make sure that everything was pre-measured. You can't really just guesstimate how much an entire watermelon weighs, and it's a lot harder if you try to pre or weigh everything afterwards, but I've got eight pounds, and I know, because I just weighed it, so let's see how much we can get of this, and then we'll move on to the rest of the liquids. All right, I'm 21 minutes in and it's starting to get a little bit rough. I'm starting to get very full, but it's a training meal. Your training needs to be intense so that it's easier when you're taking on your food challenge. Some of the food challenges that I win pretty quickly, it's because I trained so much beforehand, but I've only got a little bit of watermelon left and then I've still got my liquids, but uh, the challenge I'm training for uh, is about five or six pounds. So as long as I eat, uh, I'm trying to, my goal is about 10 of these uh, vegetables and fruits. But if I can do that, I'll be able to eat the five or six pounds of food. So I've got a little bit longer. Let's try to finish some more and then we'll continue. All right, so I'm 30 minutes in. If I eat any more of this watermelon, I'm probably gonna get sick. And you don't wanna do that because um, you're training yourself to eat a lot of food. You don't want to be practicing getting sick and you don't wanna get sick anyway. So I'm going to stop this. There's probably, looking at that, there's probably about one and a half, two pounds at most. So it's safe to say that I've done 10 full pounds of the vegetables and the watermelon. So now I'm gonna move that out of the way because I'm tired of watermelon. So now I'm going to, I've got my big straw here. You can also have a cup where you drink it, but now I'm going to use the liquids, drink as much as I can safely without getting sick or anything, and try to see how much I can get down in order to give my stomach that one last stretch before I stop. And this is where you can just let the water just go through, permeate, just like playing Tetris, just let it permeate through and really give that extra stretch, which you'll need in order to dominate your challenge the next day. Ugh. It's a lot easier to drink liquids at the end. Ugh, rather than try to eat something you don't want to eat. Ugh, and my body's practicing burping up a little bit of air as well, so 
you'll need that towards the end of the challenge. Mm, so you can fill that last remaining space with food. So I just maxed out, not the best max out meal I ever had, but this is, I've been off for a long time, so this is getting me ready for the season, but just over 10 pounds of actual food, which vegetables and fruits is a lot easier to eat than regular food, so don't think because you ate 10 pounds of watermelon that you can eat a seven pound burger, it doesn't work like that. But the big reason, yeah, and I feel miserable right now, but I'll be better here soon because the reason that a lot of people eat the fruits and the vegetables is because they're mostly water and they're easily digestible, a lot easier than pizza and rice and all the high carb and the very dense foods. If you want to, I've tried this back in the day. I used to go to pizza buffets, uh, pasta buffets and things like that, but especially since I'm prone to gaining weight, I try to stick to the lower calorie things. I know a lot of other people do too, but now, uh, that's basically it for the day since I already worked out this morning. But the big thing is, is getting ready. You want to get a good night's sleep. You don't want to go out drinking and stuff like that. I'm not going to say I've never done that, but I haven't just started either. I've been doing this a while, but definitely get a good night's sleep and then wake up and we'll talk about what to do tomorrow here in a little bit. It's challenge day. I had a great night of sleep last night. I woke up this morning, had a little bit, uh, I needed some food because it's a later uh, challenge in the day. If you have a, say a noon one or something like that, you need to adjust everything, uh, which there's an article on foodchallenges.com for that. But I woke up knowing that I had a later dinner challenge. I had a banana and some yogurt, just a light little snack. You might want to do like a protein shake or something like that. I also, right before that, had uh, some colon cleanse uh, supplement that I use sometimes to help push the vegetables and the watermelon and everything like that through so that I'm empty and ready to eat tonight. But So I did the light little snack for breakfast, had that along with some water, and then I also had a little bit of coffee a little bit later because it's a good diuretic to help get some of that water out. But now we're about six hours beforehand, so this is something that I like to do. Not everybody does it, but I'm not going to try to go crazy with it. I've got about a half gallon, a little bit more maybe, of water, along with, I don't like to just drink straight water because it's gross after a while or the lack of flavor. So I've got a very, very sexy uh, strawberry watermelon sugar-free additive in here, but I'm going to basically try to drink this as quick as I can in order to help basically make my stomach lining, wake it up, make it more flexible so that I can finish my food tonight and be ready and do the challenge fairly easily and still I'll have enough time to eliminate it and pee it all out before the challenge begins where obviously you can't get up to go to the bathroom. So let's drink this real quick. Hopefully it takes less than 30 seconds. I've done a little bit more, but I didn't want to go crazy with this because you guys don't want to go crazy with this because it can be dangerous. So let's do this and then we'll talk about all the working out. Ugh. All right, took a brief little pause there. You don't want to go cra too crazy with it. All the water is not just going to go right through you. You still got a little bit of time, so burp a little uh, air out, let your stomach line and get used to it, and then you just kind of keep on drinking it and get it down as quick as you can, but don't go too crazy to a point where you end up throwing up. And obviously the bigger your stomach capacity is, the more you're able to finish, but. Uh, and also note that I'm 285 pounds right now, so 
I can handle a little bit more water than most people just because of my size. Oh, well, I'm clearing just a little bit more room. You might read in a few places that some of the top competitive eaters, they'll drink a lot, a lot, a lot, but they'll, some do throw up. It's not something that we stress and we don't really want to talk too much about it, but it does occur, but don't be doing that. It's not a safe and effective method. Stick with a little bit less, a safe amount, and train safely and you'll be more likely to confidently win your challenge. Ah. All right, so I just got all that down. Now I've still got about six hours until I begin eating. So I'm just gonna chill, let some of that water start going through me, and then here in a little bit, we'll get a good workout in so that I'm really hungry for tonight's challenge. All right, so my liquid training went pretty well earlier today, about three hours ago. Didn't get it all down in one chug, but it's still, I got it down pretty quick. So that is basically it as far as stomach training capacity between the max out meal last night along with that one last stretch. But I won't be eating or drinking or anything until challenge time, but now I've got my stomach woken up and ready. It's time to get the rest of my entire body ready. So let's talk about that. It's been about three hours since my liquid chug, so I've gone to the bathroom a few times to make sure that I'm gonna be empty tonight, but I'm gonna get my body woken up and invigorated by doing a good workout. Now, it's up to you really what you want to do, whether you want to do cardio, whether you like to bike, run, or anything like that, or do some type of resistance training and get a good stretch in as far as with your muscles to make sure that you are hungry. As you found out during my max out meal last night, I rode about 30 miles on my bicycle yesterday, so I wanted to get a good weight workout, so I'm about to do that now, get a lot of the main lifts in and stuff like that, some heavy weights to make sure that my body is hungry. And then after that, that is really the entire training process. So everything's kind of up to you as far as what you wanna do those last couple hours after you get a good workout. And what I like to do is take a shower, make sure that I'm all stretched and everything's organized for everything, but you do what you need to do. But make sure, in addition to the training, you have a proper strategy for your eating challenge or your eating contest. And now, on foodchallenges.com, there are tons of articles and videos answering every question you could have about challenge strategy or eating contest related stuff too. So be sure to check that out. But remember that at the end of the day, you cannot fit five pounds of food into a four pound capacity bag. And you can't do that with a stomach either. So you must make sure that you've trained yourself and are ready to eat the amount of food that you are about to take down because if you can't fit it into your stomach, your strategy doesn't matter. So if you have proper training and strategy, you'll be able to dominate your challenge or your eating contest and you'll be confident because of those two things, all of your preparation, you'll be able to be confident and dominate the challenge. So that is basically it. And the other thing to remember is that you don't want to be starving uh, you really don't want to be starving before you begin eating because typically if you're starving you really aren't able to eat as much uh, from what my past experiences are and I've talked to other people but so that is why I had that little snack this morning and now I'm feeling good time to get a workout in and then it's time to dominate but one last thing is that I promise you if you're really wanting to get into food challenges and eating contests wearing foodchallenges.com gear to the various events the restaurants will treat you a little bit differently they know you're not just some spectator walking in to have fun trying your first ever challenge they know you don't just go to the sandwich shop to order a six inch they know you're there to eat so be sure to check out our foodchallenges.com store links in the description thank you guys for watching this video until next time this is randy santel 
Atlas helping you guys win before you begin.